Hey there, you are listening to episode 43 on the Air Hug Community. Hey, welcome to the Air Hug Community. I am Judy Arizosa, your host. And I created the Air Hug community to bring you stories from guests and myself that ultimately help improve the lives of others and boomerang back to improve your life. So we cover all sorts of topics like relationships and personal development, how you see the world, and just behaviors that actually affect yourself and others. So... Strap in, sit down, welcome, and thank you so much for joining in. Okay, folks, here we go. All right, this is so funny. It's 11, 11 a.m. today when I'm recording this episode, and I think it's weird that this 11, 11 thing keeps showing up in my life. Like, I never used to look at the clock and really think about it, but for some reason, I'm looking around at 11, 11 a lot, and I don't know if you've ever done any reading or looking, but it's supposed to mean that something about like angels are looking out for you, or something good is about to happen, or you're like, you're covered, you're in good hands. So anyways, I kind of like that thought, so I'm going to go with it. But today, I'm going to take on a different perspective about bad feelings, and how we need to have bad feelings. And so... One of the things that I have learned with coaching over the last um, 11 or 12 years is that if I get freaked out when my client has bad feelings, that they're going to get freaked out too. And so we've learned together actually to figure out how to navigate through bad feelings. And so I've done a little bit of research in pondering on this topic and I come to realize that in order to make a change in your life, For anything, feeling bad is necessary. So it's not just inconvenient, it's actually very important and we can't really get freaked out about it. We just have to learn to acknowledge it. So here, I don't know if I should give you my story of my example first or move on. I think I'm going to give you the story first. So let's back up the calendar a little bit, all right, to uh, 2012. And it was the end of summer, and I decided to go shopping. At this point, I'd been training women for a few years, and you know, was all into the training thing. But I have to say that that was a really good summer. There were weddings, there were bridal showers, there were celebrations. There were, I felt like every weekend there were there were celebrations and parties. And by the end of the summer. Um, I hadn't really realized it because I really didn't wear denim all summer, right? So I went to go shopping and I was going to buy some fall denim and clothes and I was like, crap, I'm not in the same size, you know, I, and I, I was like, shoot, I don't feel too good about this. I went through that whole bad feeling and I was like, okay, that's cool. And I distinctly remember being in that waiting room, taking the clothes off handing them to the lady and saying, I'll be back. I said, I'm not, nothing really is working out for me today. And I didn't really share anything with her. And I said, but I'll be back. And I vowed to myself that I would be back, you know, like in a month or so. And it was fall. So I also had a little birthday goal. My birthday is near Christmas time. Right then and there in that dressing room, I'm like, you know what? You're going to get back to a size that you feel the best at definitely by your birthday, but within a, within a month, you're going to come and buy something and it's going to fit you better. And so I took those bad feelings, you know, I didn't get freaked out, but I stood there and I decided, okay, enough is enough. Let's put this bad feeling to good use. It was not a hopeless feeling, but it was, there was definitely some disgust and it was time for me to get honest. And I knew that When I had my best success with maintaining the size body that I'm most comfortable in was that my strategy was always to use a food diary. Now, I'm not going to go into that today and talk about that, but that moment in the dressing room was when I got honest with myself 
and noticed that, no, you really haven't been using your food diary. And I have a little mantra that I use with people that is called eat IFF, which translates to eat if and only if seated. And I'm going to tell you, after that super fun summer, I did not eat if and only if seated. And I was now paying the price for it. But it's the moment that did it, that moment of feeling bad. Um, Now, I just want to... throwing a little thing here. I'm not really a yo-yo loser or gainer, and it's always for me just a, a, f- a matter of a few pounds. But, and when the clothes feel tight, it's time to get honest again. And I, I had a, a come to Jesus moment, basically, where I had to get honest with myself that I was not following behaviors that served me best. And so, but it took that bad feeling and looking in that mirror and not liking what I saw because it represented the lifestyle that I didn't want to lead. And that led me down a different path. And I thought about it and I said, you know what? I knew it's not that I hated myself and I didn't want to have the bad feelings. It was that I sat with the bad feeling and knew that I had to treat myself better. And I knew that I was worth more than that. It really came down to worthiness. So let's talk about this and break it down a little bit. If you think about the evolution of change, there's a certain chain of events that actually has to happen, right? So if you really want to make a change, a change, why do you want to make a change? Think about times in your life when you've been disgusted with something, okay? It starts out with a discontent, a strong feeling about not liking the situation that you're in. And then you seek out a solution, you take action, you evaluate and adjust as needed. Basically, you continue to rinse and repeat, right? If what you're working, the solution you're working on is starting to give you an outcome in the direction that you want to go, then you keep on with it. If not, then you adjust and try again. So, But the pivotal moment here is the need to feel bad in order to set the change in motion to feel better. So you need to feel the pain in order to change, right? And I think one of the people reasons that people struggle with weight loss in the first place is they avoid the bad feelings. But if you actually face them head on and realize that that's the trigger that directly relates back to your why, then when you feel strongly enough, you will take action. And I do a lot, of, relate a lot of this to weight loss, but it could be to several different situations, a work situation, a social situation, a person, excuse me, a personal relationship. So let's go back a minute and talk about why we feel bad. And what I like to do is break it up into five questions. So I'm going to ask the first question, why do I feel so bad And I'll go back to, you know, my situation in the dressing room. Why did I feel so bad? The answer, I felt bad because the clothes didn't fit. Okay, question two. Well, why do I feel bad about clothes not fitting? Answer, because I feel frumpy. Next question. Why do you feel bad about feeling frumpy? And the answer was because I feel sluggish and scared to bring about an increased risk for disease. Because to me, frumpy means sluggish, which means, shoot, I'm going to get sick. Well, sick, excuse me. So why am I scared, question four, of disease? Well, that's easy. Answer, I don't want to be limited to watching life on the sidelines, right? I want to be actively involved in my life. I don't want to be the person sitting in the lawn chair while my family's out there maybe going for a hike or grandchildren are doing something fun, you know, I don't want to be that person with the cane or the wheelchair, you know, or this staying at home and sitting in front of the TV. So basically, it's the FOMO, right? I have fear of missing out. So, all right, question five, why do you have fear of missing out? Because I'm afraid I might die with regrets. I might die early and miss time with my loved ones, loved ones, and future loved ones. So there's the five questions. And can you see how confronting your bad feeling and leading it to your why can send you to a whole range of feelings and it actually reminds you that you're worthy of so much more. And so very oftentimes the need to change 
you know, if you take yourself through the questions and use your why and get back to your own worthiness, you open up yourself to a whole new opportunity, you know, a willingness to change, a willingness to take on behaviors that might be hard at first, but that you know if you can get through the rough patch, if you can just stick it out, you're going to get on the other side of those bad feelings, especially if you know that you're consistent and you're just going to do it. Yeah, it's going to be hard to be consistent at the beginning, but those whys are so strong and those five questions that you took yourself down are going to reinforce the fact that you're worth doing it for. So it's normal to feel bad preceding a change. Not only is it normal, it's necessary to accept those bad feelings and it's not going down a self-hate path. It's actually the opposite. It's going down a path of having so much self-love that you understand you're so worth doing this for that you want to live your life in the best way possible. And so while this might be a short episode, it's really a powerful one. And I really urge you to, to think about your why. If you're in a place of discontent right now or save this episode for a time where you might be in that. So maybe you're on a great journey right now or maybe you're struggling. Honestly, post-COVID, I have had more people confront me and talk to me about the fact that they have the COVID-20, you know, or whatever you want to call it. They have, they have extra weight that they're not happy about, you know. Their routines didn't, they suffered, they picked up new habits, and now the feeling, you know, if you're in that, that situation, you can kind of understand that. But what I want you to know is feeling bad is not something to push to the back of your mind. Put it out in front, ask yourself the questions, and see where you go with it. And then if you're ready to make a change, you can make a change right? You, there are things that you can do. And by the way, I want to let you know that I have a really awesome masterclass all about motivation, all right? And it's a motivation masterclass that you can access and it's completely complimentary. It's my gift to you for listening. And just especially if you're ready to make a change and you're worried about motivation, listen to this masterclass because I think it will get you in a frame of mind where you can actually accept where you are and then move forward. And so, first of all, it's normal to understand that our motivation at the very beginning when we have that bad feeling and we're ready to accept it and go on, the motivation is there. We're like, all right, because you can see you have a goal on the other side that you want to get to, that you want to work towards. But then somewhere in the messy middle, it gets a little bit tough. And that's where this motivation masterclass is going to come in really handy for you. So I urge you, I will put a link to it in the show notes. You can um, listen to it. It's not a live webinar. It's a masterclass that you can go and listen to when you're ready, but it's definitely going to be a game changer for you. So I would like to thank you for listening today. As always, it's my pleasure and I feel privileged to be talking in your ear about topics that are going to actually help improve your life and the lives of others. So thank you very much. Do me a favor, please share this episode with someone that you know could definitely use this little conversation. And remember to check back in every single Tuesday here on the Air Hug community.
All right, we will see you next Tuesday and every single Tuesday for a new episode here on the Air Hug Community. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to chatting with you again next time.